in this problem, uh, I want you to consider a population model by this differential equation um, with a starting population size of 70. That means that P of zero is 70. Um, I want you to create and draw a set of solution curves for the differential equation. And then I want you to find an equation for P of T that tells us the population size at time T. And then lastly, after you have that, after you have that equation, I want you to calculate the carrying capacity using the equation with limits. So here I would like you to hit pause and um, try to do this entire problem. And then I will, um, uh, then you can unpause and I'll walk through the whole thing. Okay, here comes the answer. Okay, so um, there, there are many, many forms of the correct answer. Um, but I've got these two here. Um, I think these are the two most common um, uh, solutions that have like whole numbers in our fractions and everything. 700 over 3e to the negative 5t plus 7 and 700e to the 5t over 3 plus 7e to the 5t. You can get between these two with just a quick uh, exponential multiplication. Um, so either of those would be good. Um, this is what our solution curves look like. Um, you should just have ones that flow up and into there and down and into there. And then we've got this 100, which is the flat carrying capacity. Uh, to calculate the carrying capacity at, um, at t, I just do the limit as t goes to infinity of, I chose the top one, 700 over 7. It gives me 100. So now, um, if you got that right and you feel pretty solid with this, then we're good. Um, but I'm now going to go through and walk the whole solution uh, process to get to, why is it doing that? Um, whoa, that is not what I meant to do, uh, to get to this equation right here. So I'm going to start with this and get to that. So feel free to follow along if you want to do that. All right, whoa. Okay, all kinds of issues. All right, so I start with dp dt equals 0.05p times 100 minus p. From there, separate my variables dp over p times 100 minus p equals 0.05 uh, dt. Remember, we want to leave this 0.05 here. It'll make our lives easier. Um, from here, um, I'm going to do some partial fractions work. So I'll just do some scratch work over here. 1 over p times 100 minus p is equal to something over p plus something over um, 100 minus p. Remember, we use cover up. I plug in zero and cover up this piece. Um, when I and that gives me what goes on the top here. When I do that, I get uh, one over 100 minus zero, which is one over 100. And then for this one, I plug in the value that makes it zero. So I cover up this piece and plug in 100, and that also gives me one over 100. Um, so what I get is one over one over a hundred all over p plus one over a hundred all over a hundred minus p times dp is equal to 0.05 uh, dt. Haven't integrated yet. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do here is multiply by the hundred because it is in my way. I don't want to have it over here. It's a lot easier to have it on this left side, on the right side. So 100 times 0 0.0, whoops, 5. Remember, the easiest way to do this is to go 1, 2 until we have 1 there. And then do the same thing here, 1, 2. And then that is the same as 1 times 5, which I know is 5. So um, I get 1 over p plus 1 over 100 minus p is equal to 5 dt. Um, integrate. Oops, sorry, we've got a dp here that I didn't write. Integrate. Um, ln absolute value of p. Don't forget your minus here because of the chain rule. Minus um, ln absolute value of 100 minus p um, is equal to 5t plus a constant. Um, I'm going to smash these logs, ln 
of the absolute value of p over 100 minus p is equal to 5t plus a constant. Now I'm going to e to the on both sides um, so that I can cancel out this ln. I want to get in there to this fraction because that gets me closer to solving for p of t. Um, so I get p over 100 minus p is, and I'm also in this same step, going to deal with this. I like to do e to the c's and solve for them. e to the c times e to the 5t. That's just some work where this plus right here is the same as times on the outside if I separate them into different bases of e's. Um, from here, I'm going to multiply. I get, oh no, sorry, I'm not going to multiply here. This is my step to solve for c. So what was my initial condition? It was p of 0 was 70. So I'm going to do 70 over 100 minus 70 is equal to um, e to the c times 1. Why is it 1? Because when this t value is 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1. So really, that just tells me that e to the c is equal to all right, 70 over 30. So that gives me 7 over 3. All right. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. So from here, um, what I get is p over 100 minus p is equal to 7 over 3 times e to the 5t. Now, I want to get rid of this fraction here as soon as possible. So we are going to multiply over onto this side, but I'm going to leave the 7 there. So that gives me 3p over 100 minus p is equal to 7e to the 5t. And now I can um, multiply by this on both sides. Um, so that gives me 3p equals open parentheses 100 minus p. Um, times 7e to the 5t. From there, I'm going to distribute. 3p is equal to, all right, I have 700 um, e. Actually, you know what I'm going to do here? This is a little bit different from the way I taught it in the most recent video. I'm going to divide by e to the 5t here and divide by e to the 5t here. And then that gives me 3p e to the negative 5t equals 100 minus p times 7. Um, and that just will, will make it a little bit easier to solve here. Um, so I get 3p times e to the negative 5t equals 700 minus 7p. Now i got to get all the uh, p terms on the left side. So I get uh, 3p e to the negative 5t. Add the 7p to both sides equals 700. And now I can factor p open parentheses, uh, 3, let's fix that, uh, 3e to the negative 5t plus 7 is equal to 700. Um, and then I can divide. So I get p of t is equal to 700 all over 3e to the negative 5t plus 7. And hopefully that matches what I have here. 3e to the negative 5t plus 7. Yep, there we go. Um, and I already talked about, well, I guess, did I talk about the limit? So if I want to do the limit here, so boom, that's my p of t equation. If I want to answer the last question up there, the limit as t goes to infinity of um, 700 over 3e to the negative 5t plus 7. This is showing the carrying capacity. Remember, the carrying capacity here is the limit as t goes to infinity of this thing. So um, this term, because it's got an exponential decay on it, goes to 0, uh, which gives me uh, 700 over 7, which is 100. Check mark. Sweet. Um, so hopefully you're like, oh, I could do these logistic growth model equations. They are long but they are cool and they make sense and I can do them and they use all kinds of math that we've been working on.